well. So today we're going to talk about Oxford interviews. Now you have written your application, you've watched all my videos from the personal statement series, you've made the best personal statement, they have absolutely loved it, and hopefully now you've been invited to an interview and you want to make sure that you get that position. So if that's you, uh, this is the video for you. If you haven't watched my personal statement videos, I would suggest you go and watch that. Um, so in this video, we're going to talk about the four main things that interviewers are looking for when they're choosing who to select. And then in the next video, we are going to talk about my Oxford interview. I will go through all the details, exactly what I did, what I said, what I was asked, and um, how I conveyed these four characteristics that they were looking for in my interviews. Guys, so before we get into the video, I would love your help. Um, if you do like these videos, please do consider subscribing. I'm really trying to grow the channel and benefit as many people as possible. Also, if you engage with this video, as in if you comment um, just anything, just leave me a smiley face or a thumbs up or something, then YouTube knows that this is a video that people enjoyed and really learned from. And so YouTube algorithms are then gonna be on our side and share this video with more people. So it really helps the channel and it makes my day as well. I love hearing from you also. Um, please do try and comment and like. Okay, so now what we're going to do is jump right into my interview tips. I've got so many notes for you guys. Basically what I did was I listened to my Oxford interview again. Um, I kind of record my interviews and presentations because I just like to hear them again later and learn from them. So now I know exactly what I said some of it is cringe really to be honest um but uh yeah i hope you can learn from it so i think my first tip would be on actual mindset i always really really enjoy my interviews and i sort of like i think of them not as interview where i'm like being questioned and tested uh, I think of it more like a discussion because these are obviously professors in your field and you know you're getting to talk to them and you're getting to talk to them about a subject that you really enjoy and so for me that was cancer research and I was like yeah you know we can we can discuss it and when I do listen uh, to my interview it does come across as a discussion between uh, peers or um, people you know in the same field and it's it's more like a discussion not so much a test and I think that's sort of the vibe I like to create um, and I also yeah just love talking about the subject so I think for me that is what I brought to the interview and I think that's actually really important like it gives you so many brownie points if you can actually show a lot of interest and excitement and like genuine enthusiasm about uh, the subject. Okay, so I would say the four things that you should convey in an interview is um, knowledge in the subject. And if you are doing an undergraduate course or an MSc and you've done a research project in this area, I think you have vast amounts of knowledge in this field already more than enough you don't need to worry about going through um, all the papers uh, of your supervisor's labs right before the interview and stuff i would say what you do know make sure that you know it well so much so that you can actually explain it well um, only if you've really understood something yourself can you actually explain it to the interviewers and they will ask you questions where you can't really prepare for these answers. You just have to know these things, right? And once you know these things, you'll be able to connect new information that they give you. You will be able to build up on your knowledge. Um, so what, I guess what I'm trying to say is don't try and memorize lots of facts or memorize all these concepts. What you do know, make sure you kind of like internalize it and really understand it. That's really going to help in the interview. The second thing you want to display is the ability to learn new things because they don't expect you to know everything, um, even if it's something really basic that you should be expected to know at that point. What really helps you in the interview is if you can show that you're actually able to learn new information and you're able to learn it fast. And one of the ways they test you uh, during the interview is, um, as I mentioned, they'll give you new information. You will sort of need to learn it and synthesize it. And based on that new information, you will be sort of asked to answer questions um, about topics that you may not have heard before, but you kind of, they want to see if you can sort of give educated guesses on these topics. 
Um, and so that can really only happen if you have a good ability to learn. How do you develop a good ability to learn? Well, again, if you're studying uh, at an undergraduate or master's level, you already have a good enough ability to learn. And that's why, you know, grades um, sort of matter because they show that you are able to learn and be a good student. I always like to think about any job and I really like to break down what I'm expected to do in the job. And then in my interview and in my personal statements, I try to show them that either I can already do these things because I've been doing them, or B, I'll be able to learn to do these things really fast because I have the ability to learn. So if you think about PhD student, the PhD bit is being a researcher. So you need to show that you've got research experience or that you can be taught to do research, okay? Um, B, student, and a student learns, and that's why you need to be able to show that you can be a good student. So it granted you're already a good student by showing, you know, good enough grades, then they'll, they'll be more sure that you can be a student, a, a PhD student, you know, a student at a higher level. Okay, number three is excitement or an interest in the subject. To be honest, PhDs are really tough. Um, they will really like demand a lot of patience and tolerance and resilience and the ability to really cope with failure. So if you've got something like excitement and interest and enthusiasm in the subject, that is what's going to get you through. If I had to choose between, you know, five people for a job obviously i would go for the one who is skilled but if they really hate the job i do not want to pick them right so they want to make sure that you actually enjoy research you know its drawbacks you know its challenges but you um still enjoy it you know to you it's it's worth all the pain and so definitely show excitement and enthusiasm. Show that you've been really thinking about this subject in different ways, uh, you've been considering new research, you've been, uh, you are opinionated, you know, sometimes you disagree with what certain papers have published or what certain scientists are claiming. Um, just show that, you know, you spend some time thinking about this subject. And uh, number four, they want to see that it is going to tie in with your future career goals and that you're not just doing a PhD because you have nothing else to do uh, and you just think it's a, it's a safe, safe thing to do. Uh, but they want to see that you're actually going to make use of this PhD, that it, that it means something to you and you will go ahead and you will utilize this for something. And so if you can show these, I guess, four main things in the interview, I think that would be a really uh, successful interview. Thanks for watching, guys. Please don't forget to subscribe and do comment on this video to boost the engagement and let YouTube know that this was a helpful video. I'll really appreciate your support and see you in another video. Bye.